So the other day I was down in my basement looking for something and I came across two peaches crates full of albums. You remember albums, those vinyl things that people played music on back in the prehistoric era? Well, yes, and I came across this. Yes, that is the Beatles, the white album, the double album that came out in 1968. I'm not sure when this one was manufactured or when I purchased it, perhaps in the 70s, uh, but I was really excited about that. And so I thought it'd be fun to put together a video with some Beatles trivia about the white album. And so I give you here, ladies and gentlemen, 12 surprising fun facts about the Beatles White Album. Enjoy. Number one, the White Album was not the name of the album. The official title was simply The Beatles. It was the ninth studio album by the band, released on November 22nd, 1968. As you may know, it was a double album, and its plain white sleeve had no graphics or text other than the band's name embossed on it. It was reportedly intended to be a direct contrast to the vivid cover artwork of the band's earlier Sgt. Pepper album. Number 2. The song Why Don't We Do It In The Road was inspired by monkeys. Yes, monkeys! Paul McCartney wrote the song in India after he saw two monkeys copulating in the street, and he wondered why humans were too civilized to do the same. Paul played all the instruments on the track except the drums, which Ringo Starr played, of course. Apparently John Lennon was annoyed about not being asked to play on it. McCartney suggested it was tit for tat since he hadn't been asked to contribute to Revolution No. 9. Number 3. The song Martha, My Dear was about a dog and a girlfriend. Just to be clear, it's not a dog who was a girlfriend, it's a dog and a separate girlfriend, okay? The name Martha was inspired by McCartney's old English sheepdog named Martha. McCartney also suggested that the song is probably about his longtime love interest, Jane Asher, who broke off their engagement in mid-1968. Asher supposedly inspired a lot of other McCartney songs, including Here, There, and Everywhere, I'm Looking Through You, For No One, and We Can Work It Out. But McCartney in other interviews also suggested that Martha My Dear was a song about his muse, the voice in his head that tells him what words and music to write. Another fun fact about this song is that the entire track is played by McCartney backed with other studio musicians. It features no other Beatles. Hmm. Number four, Ringo quit. That's right, during a session for Back in the USSR, Ringo Starr abruptly left the studio and quit the band, feeling that his role in the group was diminished compared to the other members. And he was upset at McCartney's constant criticism of his drumming on the track. But reportedly a couple of weeks later, they wooed Ringo back, and when he arrived, his drum set was covered in flowers. Ah, the summer of love. Number five, Paul McCartney played drums on at least two songs on the White Album. When Ringo walked out of the session, McCartney ended up playing drums on Back in the USSR, although some of the other Beatles may have made some contributions to the percussion as well. McCartney also played drums on Dear Prudence. I think just about all of the members of the Beatles were multi-instrumentalists. Sometimes Lennon played bass, both Lennon and McCartney played piano. It was an instrumental orgy of sorts. Number six, Dear Prudence was about Mia Farrow's sister. That's right, Prudence Farrow, the sister of actress Mia Farrow, was present when the Beatles went to India to study with Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. She became so serious about her meditation that she turned into a near recluse and rarely came out of the cottage she was living in. John Lennon and George Harrison were asked to contact her and make sure she came out more often to socialize. As a result, Lennon wrote the song, Dear Prudence. In the song, Lennon asked Pharaoh to open up your eyes and see the sunny skies, reminding her that she is a part of everything. It was his way to write a song that was a simple plea to a friend to snap out of it. Number seven. Helter Skelter was recorded in response to The Who. 
McCartney was inspired to write the song after reading a 1967 Guitar Player magazine interview with Pete Townsend, the guitar player for The Who. In that article, he described their latest single, I Can See From Miles, as the loudest, rawest, dirtiest song The Who had ever recorded. McCartney then wrote Helter Skelter to be the most raucous vocal, the loudest drums, etc. He once said it was also a reference to the fall of the Roman Empire, and this was the fall, the demise, perhaps referring to modern society. In England, the term helter-skelter not only has its meaning of in disorderly haste or confusion, but it's also the name of a spiraling amusement park slide. McCartney also used the song as a response to critics who accused him of writing only ballads. Of course, Charles Manson totally related to the song, but in the completely different and wrong way. Number eight, I'm So Tired is actually an anti-smoking song. The tune was written in India when Lennon was having difficulty sleeping. But there's a reference in the song to Sir Walter Raleigh, a 16th century explorer who was responsible for introducing tobacco to England. So Lennon referred to him as a stupid git as his way of venting about his frustrations from being addicted to smoking. Who knew? Number nine? Number nine? Sorry, I, I couldn't resist. And this fun fact isn't even about the song Revolution. No, Savoy Truffle was about Eric Clapton. Yes, George Harrison wrote Savoy Truffle as a joke about his best friend Eric Clapton's obsession with chocolate and candy. Supposedly, Clapton had a lot of dental problems as a result of his sweet tooth, hence the line, you'll have to have them all pulled out after the Savoy Truffle. Number 10. George Harrison's song, Not Guilty, was left off the album. Well, a lot of songs were started in the recording sessions and didn't make it to the album, but this one is of particular note because they did about a hundred takes of the song in the studio and still it wasn't good enough for the album. However, Harrison revisited the song about 10 years later and it was included on his 1979 solo album called George Harrison. Unlike the Beatles' original version, which featured distorted electric guitars and harpsichord, the remake used acoustic guitar and had a softer tone. Number 11. Hey Jude was recorded at the same time. That's right, this classic song was recorded during the White Album sessions, but it was released separately as a single nearly three months before the White Album's release. The B-side of that single was Revolution, which was a different version of the album's Revolution 1 song. Lennon thought that the original version of Revolution on the White Album should be released as a single, but the other three Beatles objected because they thought it was too slow. So when it came out as a single, it was a new, faster version that we're all familiar with, with all the cool distorted guitars and so on. And getting back to Hey Jude, that song was eventually released on an LP on the compilation album, Hey Jude. Another fun fact about Hey Jude is that it was originally called Hey Jules, a song McCartney wrote to comfort John Lennon's son, Julian, during his parents' divorce. Pretty cool, huh? And the final White Album fun fact number 12, the White Album was the Beatles' breakup record. Of the album's 30 tracks, only 16 have all four band members performing. There was a whole lot of friction and infighting going on during those tense sessions. In fact, Lennon later said, the breakup of the Beatles can be heard on that album. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed those 12 fun facts about the Beatles' White Album. And in case you're a Beatles purist uh, and a fact finder, if I got something a little wrong or there's another nuance to the story, please leave a comment. I would love to hear from you. And if you like this video and like inspirational type of stuff, there's a whole variety of things that I publish almost on a nearly daily basis on my YouTube channel. And so please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share it with someone who might enjoy this too. Thanks again for watching. I'm Bob Baker saying so long for now.